thoughts to myself I will Oh, why so heavy on my heart And so sorrow-filled Hope thou in God be still shall be Thy glory and thy endless praise His saving grace shall comfort thee Through everlasting days His goodness may be what thou art and yet will he redeem oh be thou a steadfast heart and put your trust in him hope thou in god be still shall be thy glory and thy endless praise his saving grace shall comfort thee through everlasting days through everlasting days oh why so heavy oh my soul Good morning, and welcome to our worship this morning. Uh, I'm Father Taylor Albright. It's my pleasure to work up here. Worship. My pleasure to welcome you here. If I can get these words out, it's my pleasure to welcome you here this morning. It's the second Sunday in Lent, and so our service has a different uh, construction. We do our, our our confession of sin at the beginning. We have our same readings. They take a certain kind of angle on things. Today we're going to talk about what does faith really look like, and uh, we're going to have times for prayer. So as we begin, just a reminder, we have two people here in the building today to take your calls. Now, you might say, hey, I don't have a, a world-ending catastrophe in my life right now, but you may need prayer. Jesus said there were two or three are gathered in his name. He's in the midst of them. There's a reason he talked about two or three. And so if you need prayer today of any kind, even some encouragement, please give a call today. Uh, you can do that beginning now all the way to the end of the service. Uh, and so because you're at home and that's a weird place to somehow think about church worship, I'd like to begin today with a prayer just to help us all get focused. All right. So, so bow your head if you can or close your eyes and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this is the day that you have made, and we are glad in it. And we certainly wish, Lord, that this COVID virus had never happened and that we were here in church and in all the places where we go to church, but yet you've given us this technology that we can still stay connected to each other and to you. So I pray right now for every person who's watching on Facebook, for every person who's watching on Zoom, Right now, Lord, I pray that you would help them by the presence of your spirit to separate all those distractions that are present and bring forth from their hearts, Lord, the worship and the love of you, which is why we worship all together here this morning. May your Holy Spirit work in their lives this morning to help them connect to you and to hear you speak your word to them. Thank you, Lord God, because you are gracious, Lord, and you are present by your Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're going to begin our service this morning with this hymn, Take Up Your Cross. Take up your cross, our Savior said. 
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And so now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, saying, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Kyrie. Lord be with you. And so now let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now as we get ready to go to our readings, 
pay close attention, maybe more than usual, to the first one. Today's reading from Hebrew scripture is from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be an ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring forever after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Please join us in reading Psalm 22, verses 22 through 30, responsibly. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kinship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Today's epistle is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 4. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void, for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. 
in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and who was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, good morning again. Before I start, I'd just like to take 30 seconds to pray and just to quiet our hearts. So please join me. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your grace, the grace that has brought us to know you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, the very presence of God within us, Now, Lord, help us to be present to you. Amen. Amen. Well, in this past year, it's one of those things you don't have to explain, but we went from being busy, stressful people to being busy, stressful people now with the stress of COVID it just kind of blew out all the circuits for a lot of us and just a lot of pressure. And so during this period of time, I did some research and I found that meditation apps uh, saw a huge rise, particularly over the early months and into January. The top 10 meditation apps that you can get on your phone right now uh, 
have more than, catch, catch this, 10 million subscribers. And there's some really good ones. But the ones that I really uh, like myself are the ones that aren't just about being quiet, because I can do that without an app. The ones that I like are the ones that call attention to us, to helping us develop, um, you might call them inner qualities. But today I want to call them capacities, capacities for something. There are some apps that were originally developed, I believe, for folks uh, in recovery uh, that, are, that are based on gratitude. And thankfulness and gratitude is an essential part of, of uh, our own faith. Uh, Paul said to give thanks in all things is really a practice of ours that we don't take up. But these apps have, and if you use them, you really do begin to create a greater sense of awareness of things you're thankful for. And that's important, not just because, oh, thankfulness is a good thing. That's important because thankfulness makes us aware that all that we have in our life and all the responsibilities of our life are not on us alone. Much of we have, maybe everything from our perspective has come to us as a gift. And when you're able to give thanks, you realize everything I have has come as a gift. I'm very blessed. And so apps like gratefulness and thankfulness, there are some of mindfulness, and mindfulness is super important in this world today because while we're dealing with, oh, I wish I could go back to the past and, or maybe even dealing with problems from the past that we're more aware of because we can't get distracted as much. We're dealing with anxieties in the future. Mindfulness helps us to be present in the moment. And Jesus would take those mornings where he would get off by himself and sometimes in the evening and go up to a deserted place and be quiet with the Lord in solitude, just with his father. Simply, I believe, as part of a practice that he taught his disciples, simply for their own mindfulness, to be present in the moment, which is a real significant uh, uh, aspect of his ministry, if you watch him carefully in the Gospels. Those apps can be very helpful. But there is one inner capacity that I have not found an app for. I, I mean, we have it available to us, but it hasn't come out like in a little app on a phone. And this is the capacity for what I think is, is, the, is the capacity, the quality that drives all the rest. It's the capacity that has the ability to help us uh, deal with fears and anxieties by giving us courage it's the capacity that allows us, actually, because it doesn't come from us, the source of it doesn't come from us, it allows us to not only be loved and be healed, but it allows us to love others. And it is, it is, the, it is the one capacity which, once we become aware of it, unlocks the fact that everything we have has come from God and that we can depend on God. And that capacity is faith. Now, faith is a word in the religious community that we banter around all the time. Uh, sometimes people call Christianity the faith. Sometimes people say things like, well, if I only had faith. Faith, we should be experts on. And faith is so key for us because it's faith which allows us to walk through valleys in our life that are not just filled with darkness, we would say that there's clear and present danger involved. How will we get through this, we wonder. How will I get to the other side of this? Well, it's from the courage that comes from faith. The question also for church people should also be, not only in my personal life, but me as a Christian. Every one of us has been sent by God. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. So we already have this responsibility in our world in our neighborhood, in our family, to live these bold lives for Christ that, that in themselves are the way of showing that the kingdom of God has arrived. And that takes a lot of courage and moxie, moxie. But it all comes from faith. Today, I'd like to talk about faith from two aspects. And it comes from a scripture that we've read, we heard today. 
the first thing I'd like to ask is, okay, so what does a life of faith actually look like if I was living it? What is it like to live by faith with God in this life? What does it look like? What should you expect? And the second is, what makes our faith, the faith that's talked about in the scriptures and that's lived you know, from all those years down to us, what makes our faith unique among other practices and other faiths? So that's what we'd like to look at today. My hope is that as you hear about it, not only will you become more curious, but that you will go deeper, that you will do the things that take you deeper in your faith. But we'll talk about that at the end. So right now, I'd like to look back at the scriptures that we heard. It was that first reading that was giving you a heads up. I guess if the preacher always says, play close attention to this scripture, eh, it's probably a heads up. That's, what's, that's what he's going to talk about. And I want you to think about, it's interesting. We live in a culture which is now, you know, we talk about post-Christendom, but I'm finding out now that we're starting to live in a culture that's called post-PowerPoint. Uh, we lived for a long time. I, I used to be the king of PowerPoints on Sunday services. They were all up there because I would talk about things you know, with bullet points. And now I'm finding that like even places like Amazon are getting rid of PowerPoint because they're saying it is more complete and more helpful to make these explanations through narrative. Narrative. When I read that this past week, I thought our whole lives are based on the narratives about faith that come from the scriptures. And so today we talked about this one person, this one person who was like from an ancient city called Ur, who was not a warrior. He uh, did not do miracles, but he became the father of many nations based on a promise from God and his faith. Right now, I think the estimates are that between uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, that represents six billion people in our world today who trace faith in God to this guy, Abraham. The book of Genesis, you know, which is not you know, forever long, has, for, begins in chapter 12 and doesn't end till chapter 24. And to, so, so more than 12 chapters talking about the life of Abraham. It's a narrative of faith. And so today, we're just going to take a look at one little moment, little episode that I think opens us up to the narrative of faith that we see coming from the life of Abraham that should instruct us and help us and open us to greater life of faith. So you ready? So here it comes from the reading today. It says, when Abraham was 99 years old, I love that because nobody's exempt, right, from zero to 99. So I got a full captive audience. It says, the Lord appeared to Abram. Abram was his God, his, his, the name his father gave him. And it's not a super glamorous name. It means like, you know, the one who will be king. It simply means father. His name means father. And God takes that identity like he did with Sarah also and changes it later to Abraham, which means father of uh, many nations. So that, that's what's coming. But let's get back to our reading here. He appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. He appeared to Abraham. Think about that. And said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me. And be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. I want you to think about these two phrases. Walk before me, and I will make a covenant with you. Walk before me, and I will make a covenant with you. First of all, what does it mean to walk before the Lord? In general, we think, and most scholars agree, that it means to walk in the presence of God. What does that mean? It means that in everything that you do, you're waking up, you're going to bed, you're fixing food, you're going to work, your conversations, you remember that you were doing it all in the presence of the Lord. 
right? So, so that has an, a lot of impact. But here's what I'm gonna focus on today. There are a group of rabbis who believe there's a little twist to it as well. It says, walk before me means that Abraham was called to walk in front of God, as if God was behind him, and that he, Abraham walks in the front. Why does that have any significance? Well, I tell you why it's really helpful for me, it is because the character of the way that faith operates often feels like God is behind me more than God is right and ahead of me. Now, Abraham's life. You know, Abraham's life, here he is, the father of faith. And we would expect, if, as Americans who have grown up with uh, Disney and other movies, we would expect to hear that the hero of our faith accepted this, this bargain from God. I will make this covenant with you if I walk before you. And he walked before God. And, you know, everything worked out. You know, he went from here to there. and He he'd had all triumphs. You know, in a business model, we would say his whole life now that he was walking with faith, was up and to the right. You know, like those quarterly prophets never dipped. They just went up and to the right. Because wouldn't that be a life walking with God? Wouldn't that would be like? Wouldn't you expect it to be somewhat like a Teflon-coated life? Do we still use Teflon? But if you know what I mean, like somehow coded that like, yes, other things were happening to other people. But no, I walked by faith and my life never had those problems. I never had sleepless nights. I never had like, like dark days where I wondered if there was a God. And then you read the narrative of Abraham's life. As soon as this covenant is made, the first part is that arrives in chapter 12 is that Abraham living in the ancient city of Ur, oldest son of his father, he has family. In the ancient world, family and your father and your land is everything. That's where you get your identity from. People didn't grow up and have to wonder, you know, when they got to college, what am I going to be when I grow up? You're going to be what your father said you were going to be. You're going to be what your father did. It's all connected to family. For us, we think in terms of uh, things we're familiar with. This is my family and friends. This is my circle. This is my comfort zone. And God said, I'm going to make an agreement with you. And the first step for you is to leave all that behind. And here's the deal. And to go to a place that I will show you. He didn't give him a map. There wasn't a plan. There wasn't like the best-selling book, How to Live This Wonderful Life. And if you follow these steps, and here's the sequel. The no plan, no step-by-step. -step. Simply leave and go I will sh the place I will show you. He did it on the basis of the God who appeared to him on his relationship with God. That's the first step. What a hard step is that? How do you explain that to your parents? How do you explain that to your family? Well, I'm living for God now and I'm changing the way I live. Well, that would be uh, troublesome, huh? As soon as he goes out, as he's moving along and they're moving to, toward where they should go, his nephew says, actually, I like it here. I'm going to stay. And there's a big family split as Lot and a bunch of his family members all go. And Abraham has to kind of suck it up, take a deep breath and bless him. Later, he has to come back to rescue that Lot because the whole city is about to be destroyed. God's path leads him into places that are extremely dangerous before powerful kings like the Pharaoh of Egypt and other kings of, of smaller places, warlords. There are fights and battles, and usually Abraham's outnumbered and outgunned. Just because he wins doesn't mean in the moment he was not full of tension in dealing with what if. And the key to the whole covenant is this promise, I will make you the father of many nations. And here he is now, arriving at a place in his life where he and certainly Sarah are beyond childbearing uh, age. And so what do they do? They're walking before God. They're not sure what to do. They're, they have the promise. They're, they're not quite, haven't arrived at it yet. And so they come up with their own plan. 
I've got an idea. Maybe God doesn't understand how difficult it is. Maybe God doesn't know that it's impossible for us to have kids. Uh, so, and so he takes uh, uh, Sarah's uh, uh, handmaiden uh, and, and they have a kid. And how does that turn out? Misery, misery for that, for Hagar and Ishmael and the whole story. It, so the purpose of the way of the faith works in Abraham's life is anything but a straight line and everything came up golden and there was no tension or anxiety. In fact, what it was really like was knowing the promise, but feeling like he was walking a little in front of God and always wondering, I think he's behind me to help. And so that was the way that faith worked. But here's the deal. It did work because God was with them the whole way. And the way it happens is this, and that's the second part of the statement. And I will make my covenant with you. Now, a covenant isn't just a contract and a covenant is not just a promise. A covenant in the ancient world was an agreement that's set up usually between a stronger one, like a king who just vanquished another country, and a weaker one, like the king who just got vanquished. And they would make an agreement, but a covenant with promises to each other. The stronger would make promises. I will not let other people attack you. I will make sure you be okay in famine. I will give you the benefits of being conquered by us. If you remain faithful to the part that you do, you won't go seeking power from other kings. You won't, go, uh, you won't stray off to some other source that you remain faithful in our agreement. In the first, this is the first instant in the history of all ancient religions where God, the Holy One, makes a covenant with a person. Sure as there's gods who are like the God of the sun, there's God of rain, there's a God of mountains, there's God in the seas. They're like natural things. Sometimes they do things on their own, which, which result in uh, why things go bad for people. This God is different. He's personal. He comes. He speaks with Abraham. He makes a covenant. He binds himself to the covenant. He has to fulfill it if he's going to be faithful. And he does. The source of faith for Abraham is not strong self-will. And it's certainly not that he saw like God handed him a, prop, a set of propositions about, do you believe the following? And then he said, yes, I do. And went on and lived his life. No, that, that really isn't faith at all. Faith is this interactive relationship with a God who seeks us first and a God who makes promises to us and offers us to join him in covenant for all of our lives. So that our basis of our relationship is not our perfectness, is not our holiness. It isn't even our faithfulness to being to, to the law or, or fulfilling all the parts. It's God's faithfulness in this interaction through the experiences of real life to be faithful to the covenant. The other person of faith who's mentioned in today's readings is Jesus. Jesus is sent from God. It's part of God's mission. He is sent from God, but he's born human. And so he grows up learning through these scriptures about faith. At his baptism, he receives the spirit, but he, there's no plan. They didn't build a big building. They didn't start the, the giant chapel of Jesus and you know, outside of Jerusalem on a, on a well-traveled highway with a big parking lot. Jesus had to follow the spirit. And was his life easy? Of course, you know, Jesus just led this wonderful, well, obviously. And then today we saw that he's speaking to his disciples. Not only will I go through these things, but you, you will too. And Jesus comes to a place where his faith had to be strong enough because of his relationship with the Father. And he even has that moment where he looks ahead and he can't see his way through the, the cross. He can't see his way through separation of the Father and the suffering of the cross. And he cries out to the Father, you know, take this cup from me. 
When it says that he prayed that three times, it doesn't mean one, two, three. It means he prayed that way all night. But in the end, he said, not my will, but yours. And he gave himself over to faith in God, in this covenant relationship that God will fulfill his promise. And for the joy set before him, it says, that was his promise to see his descendants, Jesus, his descendants by faith through those who trusted in him and what he did on the cross. It says he was able to endure the shame of the cross. That's in the book of Hebrews. So faith doesn't go straight line, doesn't always have a plan, isn't always easy, but God is always faithful. And the source of our faith is our continued interaction in coming to know this God more and more, not a one and done, continuing to reflect on the scriptures to see what a life of faith is like. Increasing our faith to the point that as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, like I have this operation coming up and I don't know how it will turn out, that we see God bring us through. And every time God is faithful to his promise, it builds our faith. Every time we take a step in faith in, in, uh, because of a call that God has us, and every time we see it fulfilled, it builds our faith. And God brings us through point to point to point. Here's the last thing I'm going to say this morning about this idea of walking in front of God. Have you ever noticed that you can never quite tell what God is doing in the midst of the times where you sometimes would like him to say, I'm going to show you your future. I'm going to give you the next three years. I'm going to show you how you come through this and everything works out. Because then we would go, oh, that'd be great. But he doesn't. He calls us by faith. But once we get through, have you ever noticed that when you look back at your life, you see that God has been there in so many ways and touched more lives and been involved in ways that you could have never imagined because we only get to see it clearly after we've gone through it as if God was behind us. We only kind of see where God really has been in our lives by looking back. So two words about faith, walking in front of God and being, having a, our faith built on the basis of interaction, an ongoing interaction, not the belief of seven propositions or we memorize the creed, on the basis of God's covenant to us that he's made now through Jesus and given us the Holy Spirit. And the experience of that, particularly as we look back, builds our faith. And so I wish there was an app that I could pull up on my phone, that on times where I'm really kind of feeling crushed, in just 30 seconds, I could take 10 deep breaths, you know, and just feel my, my faith would just illuminate my whole life, and I would say, I can take it all. Well, actually, we do. We have it through the promise of God, seeing in this person, Jesus, a person of history, who died on the cross and rose from the dead and changed the world. That's one aspect. And we get more and more out of it as we look back on the scriptures and we reflect on them and we think about what would this mean in my life? So let this be, if something's triggered in you, let this be an opportunity for you to get back to the apps that God has made available to you, the Holy Spirit, scriptures, fellowship, prayer, serving others. So I say these things this morning to encourage you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you are new today, I just want to let you know that the way this will go is that we're going to say the creed now, and then when we move to the prayers of the people, uh, uh, I'm going to be praying the prayers that you send in. So right now, if you're on Facebook, even if this isn't Sunday, you can still send your prayer requests in and we'll get them and get them to our prayer people and we will pray for you. But this morning, I want you to take this opportunity now to begin sending in either by Zoom or on Facebook, sending in those prayer requests that you have today and your thanksgivings. I also want to remind you if like maybe the sermon triggered something like, wow, I wish I had that kind of faith or I don't really know about my faith, but I do have this difficult thing coming up ahead of me.
or I want to pray for my friend who doesn't have any faith, who's going through trouble. All those kinds of things you can right now pick up the phone, call the church number, which is there on your screen, and people will pray for you and pray with you. So don't miss an opportunity. Zoom is a weird thing, but you can actually have a person-to-person -person conversation and pray together with somebody right now. So please avail that, uh, that opportunity for yourself right now. And now we're going to continue with uh, kind of an explanation of what we believe by faith, uh, as known as the Nicene Creed. So please join me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. And now I'd like just to give you an extra minute simply to go ahead and to uh, make that text, send that uh, a Zoom chat, but to go ahead and make your requests known. We'll take those and add those to our prayers. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And now let us join together to pray for our own needs and those of others. We continue to pray, Lord, for this world which you made, which you continue to love. And we pray for all those who struggle and suffer right now. We try to remember, Lord, those who have been forgotten, refugees, people who have been made homeless through war or conflict, people suffering, suffering without the basic amenities of life. 
We pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs. Let not the voice of the poor be forgotten. And we pray, Lord, help us to be aware of their needs and to be ready to share generously with them. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the continuing issues of the COVID virus here and abroad. We pray, Lord, for the continual ordered way of getting the vaccine out. We pray for healing. And we pray for those who are related to the 500,000 people in our country, 500,000 who have lost their lives in the last year due to this virus. We pray, Father, for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We pray for people who do not yet know you. We pray for areas where we need your Holy Spirit at work in the world. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for your Spirit to fill your church, your community of people, to do the will, the work that you have given us to do. We pray, Father, for continued strength for all those medical workers who have just been working overtime, even those who are working in cleaning, those who work in supply, those who work in cafeterias, those who work at grocery stores, those who run ambulances, police and fire. Lord, we pray for all of these first line responders that you would give them new strength. We pray for uh, seminarians and all who feel God's call to serve for anointing and opening of doors. And we pray that every Christian, Lord, every Christian, particularly here at Trinity Church, would know their call, their call to serve. We pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for healing. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to grow strong in our faith. We pray particularly for those who struggle with mental illnesses, anxiety, addictions, and depression. And we pray, Lord, that those words and people who would suffer from those kinds of things might find it possible to share them and share their own issues within our congregation without any kind of shame, but here to find healing. We pray for our vestry. We pray for our vestry as we seek God's direction and for our two hour mini retreats today. We pray for students and parents and teachers, all who struggle with online learning. We pray Lord uh, for all those returning of the, of the return of in-person learning at Simsbury High School. We pray for our country in the deep divisions which still run so strong here, Lord. And we pray for healing, healing in our conversations and a, and a desire for unity and a greater ability, Lord, to seek the truth together. We pray for new opportunities to go away and to find renewal. We pray for all of our uh, Lenten groups and the leaders and participants. And we pray, Father, for various people. Lord, as they, as they go through their struggles, we pray for these people for help and healing. For Garrett and Ronnie and Retta. For JT and the entire Good Art Surgery family. We pray for Linda this week coming up with knee surgery and Carlita. We pray for strength for Candy. We pray for Mark as he has another appointment coming up this week dealing with liver cancer. And we pray, Lord, that there would be healing, Lord, healing and improvement. And for that, we pray we're all those that we know who are dealing with cancer for Tara, and Jim, Mike, Brogan, for Anita, Kathy, Donna, Doug, Cameron, 
and ship. We pray also for Stephen. We pray for your healing for Lisa. We pray, Father, that you would breathe your breath of life into her lungs and bring healing and particularly encouragement, encouragement and hope. We pray for Bob and his ongoing cancer treatment and for the entire family, for Marie as she begins treatment. We also pray for Shirley and Larry and Marie and Charles. We pray for Anne dealing with very serious cancer and being alone and for her three children, Heidi, Robert, and William. I'd like to give you an opportunity right now that there may be names or situations that you'd like to pray for. This is to give you a moment to go ahead and lift those prayers as if we were, well, we're all together now. So go ahead and lift those prayers to the Lord. We also want to add our thanksgivings. And so go ahead and think of just one thing, perhaps just one thing that comes to mind this morning, right now, that you would want to give thanks to God for. And just lift that to the Lord. I just say it out loud. We pray for that great feeling of coming home from hospital stays for all who are recovering from COVID for God's faithfulness to all that he promises, for the vaccine, for the medical staff that administers the vaccine. We're thankful for Caitlin's 16th birthday, for good health, medical and personal assistance, and the imminent birth of a great niece. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Just before we get ready to uh, resume our service, uh, we'd just like to say a couple words. One, Wednesday nights, Wednesday night, uh, maybe you feel like you're too busy and you couldn't get into one of our groups, although I wish you would inquire because I think you still sneak into a, uh, to a great pray as you go app group. I mean, how easy is that? Uh, but Wednesday nights at seven o'clock, we have a service of evening prayer that has music. Uh, you know, that usually once a year we have about this time, we have a very large service we call Even Song, and we kind of fill up the whole church and we go through a whole song service. Well, we couldn't do that this year, but we do have every week, Wednesday night, seven o'clock on Zoom, we have our prayer, prayer, our evening prayer that has music. We have some very gifted people who are offering their musical uh, skills and some great hymns and some service music, some really wonderful stuff. And some of it's even set to video. Uh, we did our first one last week. I found that myself, well, I got a little confused as the Zoom runner. I, I kind of got a little confused, but we, uh, we, we came through it with no injuries. But I have to admit, I found it exceedingly peaceful, uh, particularly as we ended with the final hymn. The entire service was 34 minutes, 34 minutes. And so I would encourage you to think about coming this Wednesday night uh, to our, our service of evening prayer with music. You'll also note if you go to our website, we now have four uh, different editions of the prayer of examine. It's a very unique kind of prayer, which only it takes about 15 minutes to do. Uh, and what it does, is it seeks to find where is God already present in my life? It's one of those things that increases our capacity, and particularly our capacity to be aware of God, very close, maybe a little bit behind us, 
but aware of God in our lives. A prayer of examine with today's sermon is when we get to look back at the last 24 hours and see where God has been. I find that extremely healing and centering and helpful. And so we have four different uh, uh, little, little versions of that uh, that are walking you through that with some uh, peaceful rivers and things in the background. So I just want to put that out there to you as well. All right. I do ask your prayers as soon as our service is over at noon. Uh, the vestry members who could be available are meeting today. We really wanted to meet in person uh, outdoors. Midweek, it looked like it was possible. Then a little past midweek, it looked like it was going to rain. And so anyway, we're meeting on Zoom, which has its limitations, but we're really seeking to get to know one another, to be able to pray together and lead as a group. Okay? So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrifice and offering unto God. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. 
by his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
And now because we're unable to be together to celebrate the Holy Eucharist in this way, I would encourage you to pray with me the prayer of St. Alphonsus, saying with me, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. And now let's join together in our prayer of thanksgiving, saying, Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the work to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you in, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now may Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who in himself became our covenant with God, be with you this week so that your lives might be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. And I would appropriate him as we close. The God of Abraham prays. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. Uh, even if this is Wednesday or Thursday, and this is the first time you've seen it, if something's touched your heart, please send us an email or, or give us a phone call. It's a virtual community, but we can still connect with each other. And in that way, remember, if you're on Facebook, if you share this service, it just allows a lot of other people to maybe hear something that God would like them to hear. So hit your share button and Send a couple, couple hearts up as you go. So again, you have about three or four more minutes to be able to make a call here for prayer. If God's, God's tugging on your heart, don't let, the, don't let the, the moment pass. Go ahead and call. We have two people here to pray with you. And so now, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.